And we are live once again. Welcome back, everyone. You are listening to the Solvable Mysteries podcast. This is our episode number 44. My name is Juras, and as always, I'm joined by my co-host, Glenn Highcove. How are you feeling, man? I'm doing okay. It's it's started to get super warm out here in, uh, in the valley in Los Angeles. So uh, we're really wishing we could get out to the beach. Oh, wow. I'm... Um, quite jealous to hear that because i'm still wearing a trench coat to work so but it is what it is (laughs) it is what it is but today we're gonna be talking about a very creepy case now this case that we're gonna be talking about i've knew about it for a while just because of the cctv footage involved that we're gonna obviously show uh, on our visuals by the way if you are not of watching this on YouTube, you could always check it out on our YouTube page, Solvable Mysteries Podcast, where we do visuals uh, on what we actually talk about. And without any further ado, we're going to be talking about the disappearance of Jennifer Kessie. So you could see Jennifer right now on the screen if you're watching this on YouTube. She was an American woman. She lived at the time of her disappearance in Orlando, Florida. And as of today, she's still missing. And she has been missing since January 23rd of 2006. So uh, the interesting detail in this case is the fact that shortly after she vanished, her car was actually discovered around a mile from her home. A local security camera recorded a person who could not be identified parking this car and then walking away fairly casual i should also add and pretty much the case received local and national press attention so have you heard anything about this case when it was happening or like even like after the fact did you hear about it no i I figured it must have been getting drowned out by whatever was happening locally for me because i don't remember it at all when it was happening right because I, i feel like I know about it because I look into like creepy cases on my spare time just as a hobby I guess so that's how I knew about it so I think we should before we get into the theories and the good stuff uh, I feel like we should give a little bit of a background on her life so as we've uh, talked prior to recording I think you should take it away on that end and then I will obviously uh, put my end of like uh, I, I guess the story here and there so I'll, I'll just let you take it away then man yeah I mean um, so Jennifer Cassie uh, was a, a young lady uh, who had a pretty bright pre- future ahead of her so she was known as, as being very smart in fact some of the anecdotes about her were, were pretty interesting where um, <laughs> one, one random one was that she could listen to a rap song just a couple times and then repeat the whole thing verbatim. So that mm. actually shows a pretty good working memory. I'm assuming she was pretty smart. Um, and she's, you know, from the Florida area. She graduated from the University of Central Florida in Orlando in 2003 with a degree in finance. Um, so, you know, once again, that's a, a major that requires um, some smarts for sure and she started working for a for a timeshare company um in i guess it's pronounced okoe i don't know how how i should look look that up but that's yeah yeah which i guess i guess is no no surprise for florida so florida just for anybody um who doesn't know who's outside the states florida is kind of a big vacation resort for that whole side of the united states and you know, obviously, like Orlando has, um, like Disney stuff out there, and um, you know the whole state is is pretty awesome in some ways. It's got a lot of vacation resorts and timeshares. I guess would be a big business out there, um, and I guess you know this was kind of a starter job for her. So presumably she would have been on to bigger and better things. But that's definitely the kind of business that requires you know somebody with some financial acumen. I'm sure they the financial department is probably. The most important department in that whole company right. other than maybe sales yeah so um she had actually uh, recently bought a condominium home in orlando as well 
Um, she had a boyfriend. She, uh, if you ever see the the YouTube, I mean, she's considered attractive, I think, by by any measure. Um, and that'll actually play into it. Was it seems like she was getting a little bit too much unwanted attention from a lot of people mm. uh, that was causing some stress in her life. But um, yeah, she had a boyfriend. She had recently gone on a vacation to St. Croix. Um, and she, you know, I seem to not have much stress in her life. She's also known as a very cautious person. So she had a, a pretty set routine. She was somebody actually who, this is actually one of the, the things that was interesting was she was such a regular and predictable person in her habits and she was so reliable and dependable that the moment that she didn't follow her schedule was when everybody started kind of pulling the emergency handle you know what i mean like yeah, like yeah. It's, yeah yeah that was there was there was no you know sometimes you see these cases where i mean especially what last week um where one of one of one of the kidnapping victims in our case last week um, with Ariel uh, Castro, Ariel, yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, like one one of the kidnapping victims was such the opposite of this person in terms of her reputation that like no one even really seemed to notice she was gone, um, or they didn't go looking for her. Well, this was not the case for for Jennifer. Yeah. She certainly had an outstanding reputation, personally, professionally. Um, and actually, as soon as she missed a meeting at work, um, her coworkers were immediately uh, shocked and alarmed on her behalf. So, what was strange was that um, you know she'd had kind of a normal, a normal uh, period at work after coming back from a vacation. Um, she had a a set schedule of, um, I think I think she would she would always speak with her father while driving home. Um, she would call her boyfriend every morning. Um, I think she was on, on the phone a lot in general, kind of, I think she, you could probably set a clock by her phone calls. So, <clears throat> yeah, and, yeah, right. And, and, you know what I mean? I mean, she was almost like, like the wake up call for her boyfriend. So yeah. when she didn't, what happened was on January 23rd, um, you know, that is, 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 is uh, on that evening she calls her father into my home. Um, and then she calls her boyfriend around 10 p.m. that night. And then the next morning, she didn't call anybody. And he actually got a little worried when he get, didn't get his normal call. And his call to her goes straight to voicemail. And then she doesn't show up at work either. So this is on the 24th. She doesn't show up at work. And this is also when her coworkers get so worried immediately because once again like I said it's so strange because other people could not show up to work and you know no one would care but she was so popular and so respected that um, certainly everybody did care because she missed an important meeting so her, her employer contacted her parents and they began driving immediately <laughs> the two hour drive from their home to hers so right, yeah. you know this is not sometimes like we have these episodes and we kind of get on other people about not paying attention. And in this case, her friends and family were just, you know, a hundred percent. Like if you had to give them a grade, they get an A plus for effort for trying to, you know, find out what happened to their loved one. Uh, um, I actually want to add, add to yeah. this. Uh, they, the parents of Jennifer Cassie, they are still looking for her pretty actively and they're like still uh, news coverage on her disappearance in 2020 so this year and you know her parents are all pretty much like the reason why this is still happening because they're still actively trying to search uh even like six months ago um i'm gonna show this footage a little bit later on in in the show but an orange county lake has been just recently searched uh searched thoroughly because of Jennifer K Casey's, uh, Casey's, I mean, uh, disappearance. Uh, there's a, there was a tip that she may be there. And, you know, I guess the parents sort of made the search happen, you know, like they're still fighting to, to find her daughter, which is uh, really cool. And, you know, on our last show, the Ariel Castro kidnappings, uh, I feel like 
of the three women that went missing two of the women's uh, i guess parents they didn't really do much all that much you know uh amanda berries and um michelle knights especially michelle knights and you know only like uh gina de jesus uh grandparents actually were act actively looking for her so i mean this is a really really cool situation in in a sense that the parents uh really did the right thing and they really cared about their daughter yeah yeah i mean certainly it, it seems like she was fortunate to have such a a loving family and, and it really it shows like it was kind of a high level of function and cohesiveness and the kind of family she came from so that's also kind of a clue in to itself that when someone like this goes missing it's highly abnormal it's not somebody running from something it's not somebody there was there's nothing about her behavior that look like somebody that was looking to get away from it all or dissatisfied or you know this is like this is someone whose job is to keep track of things and have a very regular schedule and who seems to really enjoy that kind of work um so, so you know what i mean I, I think we've all yeah. worked with people people from the finance and accounting department they don't don't tend to be like super wild and crazy people they tend to be pretty level-headed oh my god they're responsible people right you, i mean you just I mean, hit it yeah. right on the mark i guess because all of the finance people that i know they're like the most like cat like um how should i put it uh they're like the most like normal people ever like these guys these people uh women and men uh respectively they that work in the finance sector they always they're always on point and they're never late to do anything really and they they really keep it like a tight schedule because if there were like times where i was working for this one company i would forget like to send a certain like base uh, pay something or like something in, uh, some document involved involving like payments or anything like that to some other people um they would all, always like remind me and bug me about it so yeah like the, fi the finance people they are i mean they have to be like that you know that's the only way you're gonna be working in that field if you're really on point so you know just a quick disclaimer i could not make it in the finance <laughs> finance work field like i'd be like the worst worst financial expert there there could possibly be you know yeah it's not it's not really like some aspects of it maybe but yeah i mean it's just just you have to be so perfect with everything and 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 really they tend to be right so that's yeah yeah it's a good good uh good indication of what kind of person we're, we're talking about here so mm. yeah when they get to her place I, I i think the landlord let them in um after you know an explanation either that or, or they had a key maybe her, her boyfriend had a key i'm not i'm not quite clear on what happened there but um they get inside her house and you know everything looks normal so i mean it looks like the house looks like the the room of somebody who had gotten up for work and gotten ready for work and you know done their hair there was a wet towel clothes that were laid out um it looked like somebody had at least started to get ready for work if not actually gotten ready for work and left the house so right away this is something another one of the, one of the videos i watched for research pointed out yeah like her family started putting out flyers i mean it's kind of it's it's almost weird if there wasn't if, if there wasn't for the fact that like there's nothing odd about her family or her relationship with them or anything like that it would almost be weird how to, on top of it they were like almost like they were expecting her to go missing oh, someday yeah. oh yeah you know what I mean? oh yeah but, 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 but maybe this just shows what kind of button down like on top of it family she came from that you know they weren't they weren't you know maybe that, that that's why she was so perfect for like a finance job or an accounting job i want to that, quickly you know what I, mean? I just yeah. want to really quickly interrupt here and you know i don't i don't want to sound like rude or anything like that but like as i was researching into her personal life and the, yeah. the, the relationship she had with her family you know i'm just gonna put it out there i would probably not want a relationship like that with my family you know what i'm saying where, where i'm like talking to them every day and telling them you know what i did every day so i i talk to my family here and there but it's it's not like this you know it's yeah. um 
it's definitely not like this and if i foresee but you know the thing is i would feel like my family would react in a similar way if i went missing for like a few days they did be like they'd, they'd be probably just as on point as jennifer's parents were but i don't know man i but we don't talk that much that's that's all i, I wanted to say and another thing before we move on to other uh, parts of this case I really found it strange and I'm, I'm not sure if you were going to talk about it so I just want to add it right now I found it strange that she had those security phone calls with her uh, either boyfriend or father or mother or anyone in her family when she was like walking through shady suspicious neighborhoods or even like getting from from her condominium to her car she would always call someone on the phone just for safety or even opening yeah, a door to a stranger which so, is like I, I just felt like it was overboard but maybe that's just me you know yeah I, so I have, I have some thoughts about that and, and some of this came from some of the research so um, one quick thing was um, you know Florida as awesome as it is is not super safe <laughs> I mean it, c compared to some I mean, it, it, it is known for, it, it, I, it's it's strange, but just to mention this, but um, one of the most notorious kind of random crimes that happened in Florida, yeah. um, back in the '90s, I think, um, uh, you know, like so, like you know, before your time, but um, there was an infamous like I think it was a carjacking or something where like a a tourist from like Europe got killed, oh, and wow. it was really embarrassing, you know what I mean? Because like obviously, any any kind of crime that happens to a tourist is embarrassing, but especially like like a violent kind of crime in like a, a, a you know a vacation area is is very embarrassing to whoever the host co country and city and state is yeah so um in the south in general american south because it has a higher poverty level because of a lot of other factors does tend to have a, a higher violent crime rate in some cases and we've we've covered some of that in our other episodes yeah. so i think that's part of it she, she grew up there in florida now here's the other thing her parents her parents apparently had been held at gunpoint before, before she was born. So when they were, I guess, I don't know, younger in their relationship, at some point they had been the victim of a, of a violent robbery or something. So maybe this was always something that as they brought up the kids. Right. That it was, you know what I mean, was kind of part of their fundamental values where it had been such a formative um, memory an experience that they're like, okay, we never want, you know, we want to, hmm. I, I, I feel like that's part of it. Now here's the other thing. The other thought is, and I think for you and I, you're asked because like, like, you know, when I noticed this, it's so strange that it took me until like I was almost 40 to realize this. But, um, I remember one time I was walking in an office in my office building. Yes. I used to work in an office, an office that just had like an office building that had a lot of different companies, if that makes sense, and the hallway Perfect was not sense. busy. We, we have yeah. we have those buildings everywhere here. We, there's like a big building with like a little with, with, where there's like a bunch of uh, different companies are stationed at. You know, so that's right. Yeah, we have we call those business centers. I I think. Yeah, this was sort of like that. This was like like in a. It was actually in a, for me. It was in the Screen Actors Guild building down on Wilshire here in L.A. Um, and this is actually the first time maybe in my career or at least for most of my career that I'd right. worked in a building where like my company didn't either own the entire building or like at least a couple of floors. Right. If that makes sense. Yeah. Perfect. So, so, so usually before my other workplaces, I'd be walking around and used to be other, be, you, you would never be alone. Right. Anyway, I'm walking in this hall and I'm by myself. Right. And I'm not usually worried for myself yeah. at all. And I think you too, like you're asked, like Same. we're both, we're both, yeah. both big men. Right. Like no one's going <laughs> to, no one's gonna like you know do something to Hopefully. us. Hopefully, but I'm but I'm walking and this lady's coming the other way at me. You know, like a, another lady, probably somewhere close to my age. Yeah. And you know, it's like I said, it's kind of empty, and it it was just a normal time of the day. But like you know, it's just it wasn't a busy it wasn't a busy floor. Mm -hmm. And the lady suddenly looks up because she wasn't expecting someone there. And at first, I was like, oh, I guess this is just just us talking. Yeah. I was almost a little bit offended because I'm like, I mean, you see me, like I I don't really match. Like like I guess let me put it this way: most people would not be afraid to be around me, or like if they meet me in like a, a, a an alley. Like I'm a big guy, 
but I don't I don't look like a criminal. Yeah. I don't even have a tattoo. Like I don't there's nothing yeah. about me that even looks like at all No, no, no. even no. slightly counterculture. I'm like the most like howdy doody like you know innocent <laughs> you know you know like like like, like vanilla looking dude ever. But but then I thought about it later and I'm like, "You know what? Here's the thing. Because I because I'd never because I don't have something that like there's never any danger that anyone's gonna rape me yes. or sexually assault like like there's not and and yeah like I'm also like I'm freaking 230 pounds right now like I'm I'm football player size so <laughs> right. no one's gonna you know what I mean like like probably in almost any scenario unless someone has a weapon yeah yeah nothing's going wrong for me so but 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 for a lot of women and especially let's take her so for Jennifer who. I don't believe she was very tall. What was her? 5'8". Her, so she, oh, five foot, five, oh that's, that's a little bit tall. That's a bit um, taller, for, yeah. For a woman. Yeah, yeah, it's a bit still. I mean, even, even for most, most women, you know, there's always that fear. And, it, you know, it happens enough. I think it's one of those things where it's like two things. So one thing is just women in general tend to be, you know, overwhelmingly the victims of, you know, violent crime and sexual assault. And yep. even, even and especially by strangers. And I think in her case... As we're gonna see, it seems like I think as an attractive woman, as somebody that you know, unfortunately, I think sometimes for for some some beautiful women, it's almost a curse because it's like people's expectations for you and people people reading too much. Like like it's almost I, I've seen this before, and I've, I've I mean we've all had our own version of this, or or maybe accidentally thought this. Sometimes a pretty woman saying hi to someone and just you know an innocent way just men or whoever it is interpret it just the wrong way and so, so, so it's almost Yo, like she man, can't win that's, you know what I'm saying I'm, 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 deep. I'm going deep but this, like but, I have to agree with you because yeah, yeah. she can't win right because yeah. because if, if she isn't friendly and she isn't nice then you're like oh what's her problem oh she thinks she's too good for me oh, oh you know what i mean so then man, then, you then, just then she gets hit, the opposite right hit, hit it on the nail completely right that's exactly how i i was thinking as well like right like go on but like i i'm just yeah, like you, i just want to tell you that yeah. i'm agreeing with you because yeah and, and, and it's something it's funny I, I think as a guy i'm i'm ashamed to say it was kind of hard for me to understand this because i'm not you know it's hard maybe it's hard to, for me to put myself in her place but it really took me no joke, a few decades of my life to kind of fully understand that and kind of like, mm, you yeah. know what I mean? Be fair about it. Where like, you know, because it, it, yes. it was kind of so used to thinking selfishly and I, I've been married for half my life. So it's not that, but it's just to understand that someone like this and it, it really, not just, you don't have to be a beautiful woman. You can be any woman, anybody that has something that, that guys want. There's so many things that you have to be careful about not because you want to be be careful, but because if you're not, that the wrong thing can happen. People get the pe- pe- people want to have the wrong the wrong idea about you. People want to think that you like them. People, you know what I mean. So it's like it's like her having to walk this tightrope, this social tightrope of like not being too friendly, not being too unfriendly, not giving someone the wrong idea. And for sure, I mean, just just based on some of the research and how supposedly. Some of her coworkers were acting around her, yeah, and just the kind of like semi inappropriate comments in the workplace, and that maybe her manager liked her, and she had like an angry ex boyfriend, and all these things. It's like from that point of view, that's where I was like, you know what? I'm not so so, so surprised after all that someone who was already so cautious and organized in her life was also organized about her personal safety, if that makes sense. Man, you should be a psychologist. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. Because, goddamn, these analogies are on point. <laughs> yeah, I didn't even like... Yeah, like the way you put it together, it's amazing. So um, I have to definitely agree with you. I didn't even think about this from it, from it about the situation from this angle. But yeah, you just made like a, a whole bunch of sense, you know? Right, um... So I think that's perfect. Uh, I think we, I have this one thing set up here. I think we could definitely look at, at the crime scene. Now the thing about this case, there really is no crime scene. You know what I'm saying? No one really yeah. knows for certain where it happened. But I guess we could start from Jennifer's condominium. So I found this really cool, I don't know, website slash whatever it is. I'll, 
I'll probably put it somewhere in the link in the description of our YouTube uh, episode. Uh, I mean, on our YouTube show, so we could like uh, go through the, the the steps. So this is Jennifer Kando, and the first thing we could see is that the door was locked, and there were no signs of a forced entry, according to the Orlando homicide detective Joel Wright. But these uh, Orlando homicide detectives, you know, from what I've gathered, they completely botched the investigation. So not really sure how credible their statements are, but they state that there was no forced entry at the door at least. So moving forward, Jennifer's travel duff, duffel, uh, so a duffel bag, was near the door in the front hall. This duffel bag acted as her suitcase during the trip to St. Croix uh, or something like that. I don't know how to pronounce that correctly. You've mentioned to me how it should be done, but I already forgot. Um, <laughs> then, Croy like Troy. Oh yeah, definitely Croy. So then we're moving to the security panel. I guess the security panel, the type where you type in a code after entry, this was not not hooked up so we have to stop it right there uh do you know for how long jennifer was living at, a, at this condominium at that point i feel i feel like she fairly recently moved in i mean she's 24 and she's buying condominiums i'm 24 and i'm definitely not buying no <laughs> condominiums anytime soon so i don't know what that was all about so i think it's fairly recent right yeah yeah i think to the point where they were even still doing construction right. on the, the complex, yeah. So, I mean, it makes sense because my brother lives in a similar condominium, you could say, and the L and there's like, it's already finished and he's renting it out, but they're renting the condominium as a completely finished, I guess, like piece of property already, but there's like wires everywhere. You can't go to the toilet with like the door shut because then you would snap off the wires like it's it's a mess so i sort of get that you know that it's it wasn't hooked up because i guess these real estate developers once they make the the property like somewhat livable they want to sell it immediately right because because that's just like money wasting if it's not occupied you know um so that makes sense then we go to the food in the fridge so jennifer's mom joyce has said there was food in jennifer's fridge enough food that jennifer would not have needed to go out or get delivered food on the night of the night of january 23rd joyce says reports that there were chinese food containers in jennifer trash are false so there's another thing with this case there's a lot of false information here and it's really hard to like you know, make out what's true and what's not in this case. So apparently there was enough food to last her at least for a little while. The television, there's uh, nothing really uh, that states on the television now. I, I guess when you look at the, the picture of the television, it really, uh, it really sets the tone that this is 2006. You know what I'm saying? Cause like, that's an old ass television right there. Um, but I guess nothing out of the ordinary for 2006. We have clothing on the bed. So three articles of clothing on her bed. Two skirts and a pair of pants. They were all tones of beige that would have matched her new brown alligator pumps. And the family seems to think she had left them out while deciding what to wear. Clothing seen in this photo must not be what is, is referred to as it is not beige nor only three items, which means these photos are likely not crime scene photos, but they can sometime after with items moved, which would not, you know, uh, I guess would, would not surprise me at all, given the fact that the police department of Orlando most likely botched the investigation, you know, just and just another case where we talk about how the police is not doing their job correctly right um then we have the emergency call bell which is another interesting detail and quirk in an apartment i've never heard about apartments with 
emergency call bells, but apparently there was an emergency call bell hidden behind her headboard that when pressed would call 911. This button was active and working at the time and this button was not pressed. So if if you you know if she wanted to press it and call the 911, she could have. But apparently she did not do this. Now also I want to stop it right here for a little bit and ask you, have you ever heard about emergency call bells being Yeah, like no, behind? no. What the hell is that? I, I, it's, that's bizarre. So that's another thing where it's like, hey, Florida, what's going on <laughs> yeah. with your crime rate that, you know, like that's a normal part of a, a house. I mean, I mean, look, look, I mean, like uh, full disclosure, like my, my home alarm has like a panic mode, like a panic button you can hit that will call the alarm company and the alarm company can call 911 for you like like there's 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 versions of that and there's like um have, have you you're have you ever heard of life alert nope oh okay so life alerts like this product that's been around for a long time it's really mainly for like seniors there used to be this really famous commercial where there'd be like this um because what the the fear is for a lot of seniors especially if they live alone is you know they fall down they break their hip or something or i mean sometimes Older Man. people just fall down and they can't get up. So there was this commercial that showed like an old lady going, "I I fallen and I can't get up." And it's like a, it's oh, like a little. Oh, I, 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 yeah, yeah. I know what you're talking so, about. I know what you're talking about now. I know what you're talking about now. So there's that. So I guess maybe that was like the version I. But like to have some weird button built into your house in your bedroom, I've never like, like to me that seems like that would get hit accidentally, right. accidentally all the time. Right. Also, yeah, like, 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 like making your bed or you know doing whatever in right. your bed. Also, it seems like yeah, it's you know. like pimp my ride, but it's like for for condominiums in Florida. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> buttons. You know what's, what's next? Going on? You know what's next? A popcorn machine that comes out of like your drawers. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> what is this? We're moving along now. So previous day's outfit, the outfit she wore to work on monday hung over her desk chair so i guess that's normal that's literally exactly what i do the same you know if i go to work i come back from work i i usually lay my clothes uh on the chair i hang them over the chair just like uh jennifer allegedly had done so i definitely understand that part moving along yeah, this is where things get interesting. Unknown sweater in hamper. So a lightweight Banana Republic men's sweater v-neck in hamper. Reportedly too big for Jennifer. There was found a unknown, an unknown sweater in the hamper. Now, first of all, what the what is Banana Republic men's sweater? Is that like a brand? Yeah, yeah, it's like the Gap or something. It's oh, like a, yeah. a competitor. Yeah. So, Okay, yeah, I get that now, but also, from my end of the research, no one has ever identified who the sweater belonged to, but I feel like she, you know, I, I wouldn't emphasize the sweater too much, maybe I'm, 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 I'm not, um, maybe we should emphasize it, but it was in the hamper, which means that it was tidily with her other clothes right so it wasn't like laying on the floor all bloodied up and stuff like that then it would be right. a big a big no-no right there but the sweater was tidied up and it was in the hamper whatever that is i'm not well aware what the hamper is but i assume it's a place where you uh i guess hang your clothes over right uh hampers like uh well i always think of it as like kind of a big basket you put dirty clothes in Oh, so I know. Yeah, it's interesting. They're showing it hanging up in the closet oh. there in this picture. But yeah, for me, for me, a hamper is um, is like you know you keep it in your bathroom or something or in your your, your bedroom where you, you take off your clothes. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Mm, that's that's odd. Then then that's pretty odd. If it was dirty, then I don't know. But also, I would not really emphasize it too much because yeah. maybe she just bought it for herself. I mean. Nowadays, I feel like women tend to buy 
men's sweaters or like hoodies because yeah men's men's sweatshirt for pajamas or something right because they're a lot more comfortable than women's and i have to agree like the women's really look really tight and it would seem that it would be not super comfortable to just wear that around the house so you know if i was a woman i'd probably do the same thing i'd just buy like a a men's xxl hoodie because that's like would cover your entire body essentially you know so um moving along shower corners wet now this was another detail i was hearing a lot during my research areas behind her shower products like shampoo in the rounded corners were still wet when the police got there or or when someone got there not really sure who was investigating it first maybe it was i feel like the first people in the condominium was like the i guess like the i don't know man like how how should i describe them the people who run the condominiums what are they like landlords or something like that right yeah so the first person to be uh, and i guess detect these details i guess was the landlord and then police uh, officers came in a little bit later on and from what i've gathered they botched the investigation they didn't even take notes of all of this stuff because they were like old school or something like that and they were like we will remember this it's it's everything's good <laughs> like everything's good guys we, we we got this so moving along we have a few more points to cover uh makeup on bathroom counter makeup products out on the bathroom counter as if jennifer had gotten ready for work so obviously nothing nothing suspicious right there i mean maybe yeah that sounds extra normal yeah um, just like Jennifer was, you know, her dryer was out. Um, contact case, contact case present, but contacts were not in case. Not really sure what that means. A contact case, maybe this. Oh is yeah, where... like for, for her eyes. Oh, so oh, 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 so yeah, sounds yeah. like sounds like she actually maybe corrective contacts. Yeah, corrective lenses. So yeah, it makes. I mean, so that that sounds like the contacts were in her eyes and then the last point is the damp towel her towel was still damp draped over her washer in the laundry room with the door closed so i don't know man if someone really uh how should i say staged the the condominium they did a really good job would wouldn't you say yeah i think almost way better job than you would ever expect anybody short of like <laughs> like a like a, like a professional like like cleaners team from like a spy you know like like the kgb or something yeah so not not yeah. not anything that anybody you know kidnapping this young lady would do and i guess we're gonna get into the details and her disappearance and and theories now but first of all before we do that given all of these points that we just went through i would be heavily leaning towards that she has not been abducted while at her condominium that's, yeah that's what yeah I'm i mean at least not not inside of it right right so um i don't know man if you would like to uh go continue on with the story because i don't think we have talked about her actual abduction uh, or the car situation. So I don't know if you would like yeah. to continue on that end. That would be really good. Cool. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, her parents, like I said, her parents and family were, were pretty alarmed. The coworkers are alarmed. Her parents are all on top of it. Her parents are trying to get the police to, to respond in a timely manner and to, to get, you know, the word out and to start collecting evidence, etc. So, it really takes a long time, and if you look at the timeline, um, you know it, it, it goes from they think that they think what they think happened now, just based on, on the, the authorities kind of um, taking it seriously. I'm going to give a real quick timeline for what they think happened, what what what, what the kind of the timeline is on Wikipedia. So I'm just going to go real quick through this. So just as, to recap. On Monday, the night before, January 23rd, 6 p.m., she leaves her work, calls her parents. That's the last time they ever hear from her. 
Um, and this was the first time she'd been to her house, actually, interestingly, since she had left for vacation. So that's it's a little bit interesting. I'll, I'll, I'm going to stick a pin in that. I'll, I'll return to that later when we right. go through the theories. Um, 10 o'clock p.m., she and her boyfriend talk by phone and say their good nights. He was the last person to speak with her before her disappearance, which um, you know I think was also interesting to investigators at some point. Okay. Mm-hmm. So then the next morning, the timelines are between 7.30 and 8. This is when investigators initially believe that she was abducted somewhere between her front door and her car and they now believe I don't really they now believe that she left I don't know what they mean by this and was abducted at some point on her way to work so I guess they're not ruling out that something could have happened to her driving to work though that seems a little bit Mm. you know hard to envision how that would happen so okay yeah maybe some kind of some kind of um, carjacking Okay, 8 o'clock to 9, 9 a.m. Her boyfriend doesn't get his normal kind of wake-up call from her or morning call. And he calls her. Call goes to voicemail. And, you know, he says, oh, well, you know, she had mentioned she had some kind of important meeting that morning. Which, you know, was, we'll, we'll find out. She did have an important meeting that morning for work. And um, he can't seem to get in, ta- in contact with her. And um, at some point that morning, uh, his his parents call him to say that she had failed to show up at work. So that's when everyone's alarm bells are already going off because that's not the Jennifer that they know. Right. So 11 a.m., uh, her employers say, wow, Jennifer's not here. She never called. Um, she was here yesterday. We know she just got back from vacation, so there's no reason why she shouldn't be here. And they contact her parents, or her, her employers are definitely on top of things. And her parents start the drive from Tampa, or Orlando, and it's not like a short drive. It's a pretty, it's a two-hour drive at least. So I think it was um, like, even like four hours from somewhere I've read. Maybe it's two hours, but it's yeah, it's, it's a long drive because I've taken these two-hour drives and they really feel like forever, you know? Yeah, yeah, it would be like the equivalent of like driving from maybe Los Angeles to San Diego or a little bit further. Yeah. Um, so, um, you know, they call the manager of her, her condo, check her home with a spare key. He goes and, the, he, you know, he sees what we just described. Yeah. Okay. Uh, 12 p.m., um, only 1.2 miles, so two kilometers approximately for everyone else outside of the U.S. and England, uh, from her home – Cassie's home surveillance cameras at, a, at an apartment complex record a person in the act of parking her car and walking away. Now, here's the interesting thing. Just as a side note, two things. One thing is this person's height has been estimated as about five foot three. Just trying to judge. This is obviously like – so the, you and I were joking beforehand because this is like kind of the typical potato cam that we see – kind of from the early 2000s and before. And, and well, you still see it some places. We call it potato cam because it looks like it was filmed with a potato. Right. Um, it's really bad quality. And um, this person of interest, <laughs> quote unquote, person of interest, also known as a suspect, who uh, <laughs> is in this video, they, they call this person the luckiest person of interest ever because I mean even though we, we, you and I were both joking that even if they could see their face who knows if it would have been useful but this person's walk just accidentally was timed perfectly for their face to be behind every the friggin bars oh my god man for the exact uh, 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 time lapse this is crazy when this camera yeah it's like it's like uh, so maybe that's one of those eerie things where you know like if this was a movie this would be like the scary ghost thing that like makes it not makes them not human. Um, okay, so <laughs> so there's that, but but that I mean that's that's obviously disturbing. That this is where you go and you, you say, well, it's so frustrating, right? Because you were like, oh, if only there was a camera. Oh, there was a camera. Oh, it caught it it captured somebody parking the actual car for some reason way far away from her apartment. I mean, not like one mile, walkable. I believe. Yeah, I mean, in, in Florida, that would be a brutal mile to walk. I tell you that it's, it's yeah. warm out there. Even even in January, it probably gets warm. Um, so you know the uh, uh, okay, they have that. 
And then meanwhile, for like, as far as, you know, her family's efforts with the police in real life. So, you know, from three to three fifteen, when her parents and her brother arrive at her apartment, so men, they've been driving all morning and they, you know, they see what we, we talked about. They call the police and the police don't really take them seriously. It's kind of that same frustrating thing where, I mean, I guess to be fair, it's like this in a lot of other parts of the nation where um, when someone's an adult, it's a lot harder to get the police who are usually busy and dealing with, you know, un- untold other numbers of crazy things. It's hard to get them to take a disappearance of an adult seriously, at least until, um, you know, they, they kind of some other compelling evidence is put out there. And unfortunately this is probably lost time. And then finally that evening, um, her family and friends just saturate the area. They're passing out flyers everywhere. Yeah. And the police then do at this point, send a detective to her home and start doing interrogations and searches. So, um, finally, let me just wrap this up by saying on Thursday, the next morning, so this is the 26th of January, um, a tenant of the nearby apartment complex who had seen her car on the news, so this is the person that helps helps them discover the video of the, of the footage, yeah. says that he has seen the car and it has sat abandoned in front of the apartment for several days. Um, I don't know why they say so. Oh, I'm sorry, because, yeah, this is two, two days later. So Tuesday was when she disappeared. Thursday is when this person calls and says, hey, this weird car has been parked in front of my apartment. They're not supposed to be there. It's her 2004 Chevy Belt. So, wow, you know, she bought a car and and uh, got a... Uh, this is a uh, mystery. Honda. This is a whole nother mystery because how did she get the money for these things, you know? I, I, well, I think, well, two things. One is I bet you she was making a nice living at this company and maybe she had help from her parents. Um, right. Sounds like it was a pretty pretty supportive middle-class parents, you know, family that put her through college. Yeah. And then... Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm assuming, I, I can only assume that she was making some good salary at that job, and uh, Florida, you know, real estate's not that expensive down there, I want to say, so maybe she was, someone someone who's in finance and working for a timeshare place, she may have been able to get a real good deal, oh, oh, plus it was, uh, it was early 2000s, so I think land prices were not super hot yet. So it was right, right. right it was right as kind of things were getting going and there was a lot of development going on in Florida. So I bet you she was kind of like it, she was like perfectly placed yeah. to get a great real estate deal with a great salary and, and and knew exactly what she was doing with the loan and everything. So, yeah. Cool. That's my thought. By the way, this is her car that we're seeing and I feel I feel like yeah, this is the picture where she, where the car was parked. So, you know, it was parked pretty tidily up. And another interesting fact, the person who parked the car actually, like, parked it really well. Like, they parked it. And on the first attempt of parking this vehicle, they actually didn't park it completely even. So they evened it out. So that means they were in no rush to do any of this. And they walked out of this car and passed all the security cameras or everything like that. They were not too much, uh, I guess, they were not too worried to get spotted. So this immediately is a little bit of a red flag to me because I'm definitely leaning towards that maybe the person who parked the car may have not been completely uh, involved in her disappearance. Maybe this was just someone random who was sort of given the car keys and and, and given like a hundred dollars and, and and told like, park this car like a mile away from, from this area right now. And they did. Maybe that's the case. I mean, we'll get into the theories, but I just wanted to uh, drop this in really quickly because I feel I, f- I felt it was odd how the guy was just or, or or woman. By the way, no one knows the gender yet of the suspect, man or woman who parked this car. Just seemed to be really casual about it, you know, not like someone who just potentially raped, murdered, and burned a body. 
you know? Yeah, you know, I was wondering, what do you make of the person's height being, I mean, the person, it sounds like they, they, I'm, they think it's the person BS, was, in my, in think, my opinion. They, they I think, think it's that's BS. Not real? How, how do you even, because, they're, okay, so from my end of the research, what what did they say? They say it was like, what, 5'7"? I think I have an infographic. Yeah. Okay, so now it says five foot seven. Oh no, it's like obviously it's her missing poster. I'm talking about like the suspect. The suspect. Yeah, it, it's in. So in Wikipedia, it says that they said it was between five three and five five. And then I mean the other thing, just coupled with that, is yeah. I'm trying to re- real. You know, it's so hard to make out. I wish there was a little bit better. The person. It, it looks like so. Okay, the shoes. I'm looking. I want to pay attention to the shoes. I'm going to assume. Yeah. Uh, I don't I don't know if this is right, but they said that she had some kind of beige shoes or pumps. It sounds like she wore heels. These do not look like heels. Those look like men's shoes. I'm not saying well, the like person the, is the, from is, the camera. Uh, yeah, from that from this one gif, from this one JPEG from the Wikipedia I'm looking at that of the of the footage. Um, yeah, need zoom. Ugh. This is what I'm looking at. This is someone from Reddit who had Photoshop. Uh, they used Photoshop to yeah. shop to enhance, and and this doesn't look like a woman at all. Obviously, you are now seeing if you're yeah, watching, yeah. Some, you're seeing two two people, but I think it's just how they edited out like the the clips, you know, together. Um, so, um, I yeah, think it's that's what I'm, oh, you've I'm, sent me something, right? Yeah, yeah, it's it's just the same photo. It's just the, it looks like because the, the Reddit person okay. polarized it to try to. Yeah. Looks like they took a couple of the frames and it's the same frame. So I'm looking at two things. I'm looking at the haircut. I'm looking well, three things. I'm looking at the haircut. I'm looking at the shoes and pants. Yeah. And I'm looking at kind of the shirt and the arms to try to say. I mean, so. I just want to quickly add. Yeah. I, f- I feel like that's not a haircut. I feel like that's a hat. Don't you think that's a hat, or is that a haircut? It's, yeah, it's hard to tell because I'm like, what style? If it was a hat, it would almost look like a. <laughs> it doesn't look like a hat that's right for. It's so, like a old old school Englishman. You know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't, it, doesn't, it doesn't look right for America. So like America, like we only really wear two kinds of hats. We pretty much wear. I mean, other than, unless you're like a hipster or something, and this was not the right year to be a hipster. Not so, yet. I, I mean, especially, especially in like Florida. Like in Florida, I figure ninety five percent of the hats on 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 men, um, and maybe even on women are baseball caps. Wait, that's the, what I feel like. Okay, okay, I get that. You know I, what I mean? I get that. Yeah. Moving along to the shoes, I didn't even get this in detail that someone said that it was heels. These look like. Complete well, do, well, men's no, work shoes. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So her, her shoes. Because let's let's say, let's say oh, we say, you know what? I get it. Yeah, let's say we say, you know what? The height. They're, they're saying shorter than her, but maybe it's her. Maybe she she moved her own car. Maybe she did something weird. She cut off her hair. Maybe maybe this is all because because to your point, the person mm. that parked it takes all this time and, and care and, and parks it like they like they, they give a, a crap oh, about so, the car. So you, so, oh, so someone saying yeah, that, but, that it was Jennifer, right? I, I definitely don't, it, don't it, believe it, that. It, it's, it's me saying, what if I was saying that? If right, I was saying right. that, I, I, I would look at the shoes right away and I'm like, okay, two things. One thing is, those shoes don't look like the kind that have heels. They look like big men's shoes. And the shoes look big. The shoes yeah. look big even for the yeah. person. Yeah, it looks like Don't she they? had some big feet. Yeah, it kind of looks. I mean, it, it, you know, it, it kind of. I would say if it was a woman, right? It was a woman that liked to dress like a man. Take take that however however you want to take that. But that's you know, it may, no. maybe the haircut too. If, For, if that's hair, you know what you know I, I mean. You know what I think. You know yeah. what I think. I think this definitely reminds me of someone who's doing a either construction work. Or okay. or B even more likely, like some sort of a paint job, like painting stuff, you know, like like uh, a, yeah, like a painter, yeah, yeah. like those white, because that that outfit doesn't even look like it's it's like a shirt and pants. It looks like an overall and then a shirt. You know what I'm saying? Like uh, you have a shirt on, 
you, then you have no pants but then you have an overall with like those jock straps that or, or not jock straps what am i saying but those like i don't know what <laughs> what they're defined uh how you define them but like those th those straps that go over your shoulders right so that's that's an overall to me because because it just seemed like a complete overall and then probably like a shirt and then the hat I, I feel like that's a hat and i feel like that's the type of a hat that painters would wear i don't know man if i'm making any sense but i feel like there's there are certain types of hats that painters wear when they paint or maybe i just have a messed up uh vision of of, of house painters in my head but yeah the, the, that could be right maybe that's why the hat looks because to me I, for some reason in my head when i look at it in my head it looks like it kind of looks like a, like a like like a haircut to me it looks like a haircut where the hair is long on top and really really close in the sides and back so but that that's but sense. that's but that's what what people get now like that's some hipster stuff yeah, that's yeah. that's not 2006 maybe this guy well, like was a time well, time traveler or something I mean, I mean, kind of. I mean, it, it depends where you live, really. But here's the, that's just another funny thing about the U.S. is there's weird, you know, like 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 the mullet was still an acceptable hair <laughs> oh hairstyle <my> for 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 you know way deep into the '90s and 2000s when it was it was long dead, long dead in the in the uh, in, in Los Angeles and New York. Right. Um, so you know things things are different. But I mean, you know, I mean, I mean, I. I I had a haircut like that in the '90s, and I, I still basically do right. have a short on the sides and back, yeah. long on top or longer on top haircut. But yeah, it kind of looks. I, I, you know what? I, if I were gonna say, mm -hmm. I, I could I could see. Let me phrase this right so we don't get in trouble with YouTube or the audience. God I could forbid. see. <laughs> I could see this being, especially with the size. So the size and depending on the demographics to this person. I could see this person being like a masculine dressing and acting and haircutted woman, if that makes sense. So oh, wow. somebody that you know, it's being pretty specific, but I could yeah. see somebody dressing like that. You know what I mean? I mean, just yeah. Part part of being part of being equal equal opportunity is, and I, I want to say this for another part of one of the theories too. So part of being equal opportunity is you know acknowledging that the whole spectrum of people is out there and that anybody could potentially do anything. So that's one thing. Now here's the other thing is um, do we want to get into some of the some of the suspects and some of the theories? I think it's about time. Happened? I think it's about time. We're yeah. about to hit that one hour mark and I think it's time to get into the good stuff. Okay. So I mean here's the thing. So I'm going to bring this up, and I'm going to be really careful how I phrase it, because I think we want to be fair to both sides. So, yeah. on one hand, the, I, this is the reason why I'm dancing around this a little bit, is that when you bring up... So, so one of the things that she had commented about was that there was a lot of construction going on at the at where she lived, um, because they were still building out, there's a big complex, they were still building out some of that stuff. There was a lot of work getting done. In fact, some of these workers even needed to have access to her apartment and enter, which which is totally normal. When I lived in an apartment, that happened where they had to like replace all the toilets. So they had, we had to give them permission to enter. Like we were told, they were gonna, people, I was a little bit bothered by that, frankly, because I didn't really like the crew of people they had doing it did not look super professional and I'm like oh really they're going to have access to my house with all my stuff in my house and I don't really know who they are and I see them kind of that's, grab that's, ass that's, around the parking lot yeah that's, it's that's a little really, bit that's really disturbing you know that's that's a yeah. weird situation right there but I mean it is what it is so, you know what can you do about it right right so she's you know like like depending on her agreement with her landlord and the you know the condo that she's paying for whatever um, yeah so so that this was happening, and she said that, like I said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be careful. You know, it, p people that know me and know that I'm I'm a, uh, I'm in a household where my wife's an immigrant and we're a, we're, a, we're a Latino household. So please, don't take what I'm saying as being against anybody. It's just really trying to be fair and being equal opportunity. So, she said that some of the workers, um, 
seemed to, to say stuff. They, they seemed to stare at her a lot and say things about her in Spanish that she actually understood. She spoke Spanish, which a lot of people didn't realize. So she said they were saying some not so nice things about her. Now, okay, like construction workers forever have been known to say pretty obnoxious and sexist thing about women. I mean, that's, 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 that's their thing. Yeah, like that's, that's their claim to that, fame. Yeah, that's, that, that, that's, that's, yeah <laughs> claim to fame is the best way to put it for sure. Yeah. So, okay, but she it was enough to say that she had actually made a point of telling people she knew that she didn't feel comfortable about these individuals. This coupled with the fact that they're entering her house. This coupled with the fact that she had been gone from her house from some period of time, and the workers were in fact living in some of the empty units at this place and depending on whether or not anybody noticed that she had gone on vacation yeah. kind of makes me wonder if anybody had been accessing her apartment while she was gone and maybe got a little used to oh. you know just got a little you know that's a sort of interesting food for thought so here's the other thing is so for me just uh, and here's, here's the other weird thing is that her brother says that when he tried to talk to some of the workers later, yeah. they basically ignored him. And also, when all these cops showed up, half the workers left. Like, they never came back to the site. There's a bunch of things now, to be fair. There's a bunch of things. A bunch of, there's a bunch of things. I mean, some of it is this was like the Bush era of um, the presidency. So, like, we were a little harder on immigration then, Not maybe not as – Gung Ho is, um, you know, like like the president is right now, but like like there was definitely, um, like it wasn't like 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 the amnesty era, you know. So like, yeah, truth to be told, there's always going to be, you also, you know, like especially in construction sites, often there are people that aren't documented who are worried about getting deported. So that okay, that makes sense. And then as far as the workers ignoring her brother, maybe they didn't speak English. Maybe who knows what was going on there. It's hard to really read too much into it what i would say is the fact that you and i both noticed that the person looks like they've been painting or doing some kind of construction work the fact that their height might potentially match better with the height of somebody from a different part of the world um rather than like i don't know from my part of the you know from from where my ancestors are from or i'm, I'm six foot two i, I want to really like, really yeah. quickly chime in here I mean, yeah, like the police investigators and I believe FBI as well, they stated that the person was what, like between the person in in the CCTV was between five two and five five, something like that, right? Um, yeah, which but, is yeah, which is pretty short, pretty for, a, short. for a male, right? Like, that's, but, that's for, for for some demographics, it's pretty short. Yeah, that's like that's like that's like like lower lower fortieth percentile. I definitely get that, but at the same time, some other private investigations that I believe the Kessies ordered estimated the man's height somewhere around up to five foot ten. So he's so this man was definitely not okay. not not tall. He's yeah. definitely not tall. We could definitely have that like. At least straighten that, but but it's really really uncertain if he was really like quite short. You know, okay. we don't know this because some some estimates uh, estimate him up to five foot ten actually. So yeah, yeah, and it's hard to tell. Like like I said, this camera is impossible to even even the NASA yeah. NASA did some work on this, and they they were like, <laughs> yo yo, you better get some better cameras. <laughs> yeah, like like it's it's true, right? And yeah. and like so I said, but I, I say this. Because I want to be fair. Because as much as someone might turn around, I guess I know I'm, I know I'm going overboard in this part, but there's a reason. So as much as someone might turn around and say, "Oh, you know, like like look, look we're not political in this show. We we really try to try to stay in the middle." Yeah. But there's people that that will just because you don't want to always blame or you don't want to just just go to blaming immigrants or whoever for 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 something doesn't mean that immigrants never do crimes and there have been actually been some pretty notable murders and crimes that have been done by immigrants including mm -hmm. a very famous serial killer that was that was traveling on the trains who it turned out yeah, was actually an undocumented illegal immigrant who, so, yeah, no, you, so who's that guy I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll have to look up the case again but okay. it, it was pretty famous it's, it's one of those ones like I said it gets a little political because right. that's when people point People point and they say, "You see, that's why." But like, like I don't want to go there with that. No, but I want to no, point out yeah. that, like, like you can't, you can't, like, 
out of political correct- correctness, it's the wrong. The wrong move is to say X group never does this because no, no, that's not true. Like, like you don't yeah. want to say X group always says this, but you don't. You don't want to go too far the other way and say X group never does this. Let's just be fair yeah. to everybody. So I, mean, I, w- I want to that's put that fair. out there because 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 that was that was one of the biggest groups that everyone was looking for because you know as far as random crime and people that were noticing when somebody was coming and going whether they had anybody with them so someone would notice that she never had anybody really very often with her that she always left this time of day that she lived in this place you know even had had the ability to get in and out of her apartment yeah. and hide in her closet if they wanted to i mean who knows right and that's that's one group of people the workers at that complex who had one of the most compelling motives in terms of like random people this isn't to say that oh yeah oh yeah they're ruling out carjackings and things like that because they they do random weird crap like that does happen but yeah it's okay so that was kind of scenario number one was a worker or a painter or a contractor or somebody who kind of matches the description and then this person might not actually be the person like you said maybe that's why this person was so calm is they had no idea they were like kind of a, a second or third party to this whole thing and just someone told them hey can you move this car over there and they had no idea until they saw the news later that they had just helped move some kind of you know murder scene right right that's that's a good way to think about it that maybe this person whoever it is that we are seeing on the cctv maybe he really he or she by the way we don't know yet maybe he really the person didn't know what he was doing you know they were just like the the manner of the, the work and the the car parking and and also why would you park a car in a i don't know in a housing area where there's a lot of people living there you know why would you not just park yeah, it all these all these witnesses yeah right? why would you not just drive park... it off a dock or something right i mean yeah put, what, put it what? in a swamp yeah yeah there's that's... all these yeah yeah all so that's that's weird and, and by the way if you were let's suppose you were like a friend of somebody Somebody asked you to do this thing. You didn't know what you were getting into. You go, you're like, okay, I'll just move the car and, and, and walk back to wherever, you know, just like, you know, this yeah. dude told me to. And then you find out later that this is part of a big case. Let's suppose you, you are like, whether or not you're, you're a documented immigrant, even if you're an immigrant that's here on a green card, Yes. do you think that like, is that going to go real well for the rest of your, you know, like suppose and, and the cops are saying, please help, you know, well, you know, don't worry. We're not going to come down hard. We, you know, we just want help. Yeah. But like realistically, like let's suppose you were even there le- immigrating legally. Would that be like real great for your case for immigration? Like, don't you think that as soon as the trial got through and you testified against your friend or whatever happened, don't you think as soon as that happened, they would say, yeah, you know what? We don't really like who you're associating with. Um, I mean, but at the same time, at at the same time, those Benjamin Franklins look really nice when you're getting offered them to drive a car. if, if if oh yeah yeah I mean that's that's I mean that's so what I'm saying is it's like I don't know that the government can make a super compelling case right. for somebody that that had anything to lose you know what I mean by like by like appearing to associate with the wrong person well like to your point somebody you know someone could say hey here's here's a thousand bucks to move this car and by the way shut up or I'm gonna get you deported right. Right, you know what I'm saying? Right, right. Yeah, and yeah. Then, then you comply because that thousand dollars back in 2006, oh my God, you could go like bowling for like a week, you know. So that is yeah, what that, it is. That's, that's rent, right? You know, I mean, that's yeah, yeah that's a lot of things. So, that's a lot of things. so yeah, okay. So, so there's that. So then, um, that was one theory. Then the the other theories have to do really with the, the cluster of people around her. So, this is where you get. There's a couple of main theories were. One was um, she had an ex-boyfriend, this guy Matt. Who, Rob, uh, I believe. Or me? No, yeah, yeah you're correct. Uh, the the current boyfriend was Rob. The the ex-boyfriend okay, yeah, was yeah. Matt. Yeah, sorry, sorry for that. Was yeah. Matt, yeah, and and he, I mean, he apparently wasn't super happy. Um, and even interestingly, the night, the night of her disappearance or before she disappeared, he was interestingly enough having uh, drinks. 
at a restaurant or bar or something that was really close to where she lived. I just so, want to quickly, quickly chime in because I feel like we have yeah. different, different informations on this. Okay. Yeah. What what I believe happened with this ex boyfriend, he was actually a friend of her, of Jennifer's brother, and okay. they, they actually were um, looking after Jennifer's home. Okay. While she was out, and that's when I guess they had those drinks, or I believe that was the case, or maybe I'm wrong, so don't quote well, was, me on this there one. There was some weird thing. There was this guy, Travis, who she had his phone, and she was having to... Yes, yes, that, that's also... Yeah. What, so the, I don't, what the hell, a little bit, yeah. Yes, yeah, so I don't know, so there, I guess, I don't know if he was the one that was taking care of her. I'm a little bit, that, that's probably where my research falls a little bit short, is I don't think I, I totally understand that whole thing about you know like what what happened there but yeah so so anyway he was apparently he has some kind of alibi though Matt so yeah they, I'm, I'm trying said, to look look into it right now yeah like so that, oh, yeah so okay we'll, we'll we'll stick a pin in that for a second so then all right so then the next thing was and this is where there's another kind of like weird interpersonal thing going on is there was a manager one of her managers was known to have kind of seemingly been smitten with her I think he was even married seemingly yes, smitten with her was, yeah. <laughs> he's super married and a little bit too into her which is not a good um, thing for the workplace and depending on who you listen to had maybe even been bad mouthing her boyfriend saying her boyfriend wasn't wasn't good for her she was too good for him and 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 apparently so here's where we get in a little bit gray area is a lot of what i'm about to say are allegations from another co-worker who has had work and personal disputes with this manager so this other person alleges that this same manager who was apparently upset with her the day she came back that she went on this trip, I guess, with her, maybe he was upset that she went on a, on a vacation with her boyfriend. Which is maybe he was jealous. Really, really odd, but yeah. Yeah, which is just not a good sign. And then, oh, you know, it could be. I know, I, I can tell you that my first couple of years of working, I used to get really pissed off when my coworkers would go on vacation because that would be when, like, their accounts would just go crazy. So I'd have, like, these, like, nightmare days of oh, doing, yeah. like, three, three or four times my, my normal work because, like, they're their salespeople were crazy um, and just doing doing like just just whatever it was it would be just every kind of mess would happen would fall on my head as soon as they went on vacation it makes sense so so maybe who knows maybe that happened maybe just just the finance it's kind of hard to cover for somebody when they're on vacation could be um, but whatever reason yeah so this other employee says who's also had conflicts with the manager says that there was all this kind of weirdness between her and the manager there was even someone al- alleging that they were having some kind of affair, but I don't really believe that. Doesn't nothing. I mean, other than that weird sweater in the hamper. So you're talking really about st- Johnny Campos, I believe. By the way, right? That might be who. Yeah. That, so that was this-, th- this is the guy. By the way, I, I just found this uh, picture. Uh, Johnny Campos, I believe, was the man that you were referring to. Uh, yeah, he was uh, ten years older than Jennifer at the time, and he was also, as we've mentioned, super married at the time. And yeah, this is his mugshot for like arrests.org for some other stuff. So, oh, what did he do? Um, he was involved in shady business practices where he was sort of hiding money from the company, but the company was shady. So, I don't know, man. They were just like really doing <laughs> some sh- all around shady stuff. And you could see from his face that he's not the, not the, not the most transparent person I have ever seen in my life, you know. <laughs> he looks kind of scary. Yeah. So that's so that's so uh, Campos for you. He looks un- unhappy, definitely in that photo. Um, yeah, that's interesting too, because you think like, huh, company that I mean, because timeshare stuff. I'll, I'll give you. I'll, I'll be frank. Like, seventy-five percent of the time, I don't have like a super favorable opinion of timeshare stuff now that being said i had a vacation this past summer um in someone else's timeshare and it was awesome 
And so, like, from that point of view, right. whatever this person was paying for the timeshare was seemed to be 100% worth it because it was it, 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 it was 100% a positive experience. So yeah. make of that what you will. But that being said, I, when I'm on vacation and someone comes at me with a timeshare stuff and wants to give me a sales <laughs> pitch, I want to punch them in the face. I mean, yeah, just, like, get away from me. Right. I, 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 like, like, like... <laughs> Yeah. So, so oh, yeah. Maybe we're I'm not, not getting surprised. sponsored by Timeshare yeah, anytime yeah, soon, this, I guess. This this podcast sponsored by the Timeshare Association of America. Um, so yeah, yeah. I I mean, um, you know, that's that's a little bit disturbing. So the other th- allegation was that this Johnny Campos guy didn't show up till like eleven o'clock or something that morning, and um, supposedly might have made some kind of crack about why she was missing like oh the alligators are probably eating her right now or something something like off color I don't know about that I don't know I can't say that's true I don't know if it was him or another co-worker but supposedly there were two, some co-worker. there were two co-workers from my yeah. research one was this guy Johnny Campos yeah. who was really into Jennifer essentially to the point where Jennifer actually had to call her parents and ask for advice because this co-worker who's also a higher up in this timeshare place he's like really hitting on me and the parents were like go on a go on a dinner date with him and tell him that you're not interested in, in the guy but it's like <laughs> what what what, what? what? go yes. on a date yeah yeah like That's a wrong like like set message. up a set up a date and then tell him that you're not into this dude so i mean you know there's one way to handle these situations i guess it's the early 2000s you know now this situation would get handled in five seconds you would just make a tweet uh, a twitter tweet uh, and that and it's over pretty much so now ruin his life right so <laughs> so i mean johnny campos would not make it in these days but back into early 2000s was like prime time for Johnny right there so um so he got like convicted for some other stuff but there was this other co-worker who was like really acting weird and a lot yeah. of people were I don't know his name but there was like uh, another guy who was really weird and he was sending Jennifer text emails that she looked nice like emailing her that she looks nice it's it's a weird weird thing to do but you know the early 2000s were definitely weird um uh, I mean so so maybe that that so that that was part of the reason that was exactly actually part of the reason for my whole long spiel okay. at the beginning of this thing about kind of the curse that like a a, a pretty woman or or any kind of woman often because it's just you don't have to be super attractive to get that kind of like like unwanted attention like she didn't ask for that attention it's something that's like a blessing and a curse some people would say oh well maybe you get more jobs you get more positive attention or you get a raise or whatever you know because just because there is a there is a halo effect for attractive people where attractive people statistically tend to get more opportunities and better pay and and, and like the benefit of the doubt yeah but then you see the downside right you get sexually harassed at work um or you know get inappropriate messages you get all this attention that she's not looking for. She's just trying to do her friggin' job and, you know, yeah. trying to, trying to, trying yeah. to go from point A to point B, you know, and has to like do security calls with people. Oh my and God. still has, you know God, what I mean? Come on, man. That's, that's the way to you. That's, that's a, that's not something I would want to be part of, you know, like part of that nah. lifestyle. That's like a messed up situation. Like I'm so used to just casually doing stuff. Not worrying about my own safety, but like if I had to yeah. worry about my safety, that would be like, oh man, what, what would that even be like? But yep, as you've mentioned, so these two characters at her workplace were really interesting. I, I've seen a video on YouTube where this one guy he makes a really good uh, back work investigation. He did like really good work, and there's a, a situation where the boss of this particular timeshare uh, place establishment was involved in like drug trafficking and uh, shady deals I believe even like prostitution while like being the boss of like timeshare and then Johnny Campos was also involved with this person and then there's a theory out there that maybe Jennifer found out about this stuff and they just decided to 
take her out of the equation, if you will. So um, yeah, there's 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 that also. Wow, I don't know. It's 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 pretty crazy. I mean, yeah. I mean, I guess I mean I guess nothing seems too crazy for this because her disappearance itself is so inexplicable, and it. I don't know. Like, like on one hand, you would say, well, like it would take a lot of effort and that somebody would put up a big fight, but who knows if they put up a big fight. Right. They don't, you don't, you don't know that somebody like, especially like someone comes, I like I've, I've told my wife and now, and now my kid, I told them like, look, especially as a woman, if someone comes up to you with a gun or knife and tries to get you in the car, yeah, like get shot, get stabbed, do not get in that car because whatever's going on in that car, is going to be worse than getting shot or getting stabbed. It's that's, not the same that's thing. That's good advice, yeah. Because you you might yeah, I mean, you might be in a car with with another aerial Castro, you know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like I mean, you and me, someone comes up to us with a gun or a knife. Yeah, they might. You know, they might they might actually just just be trying to 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 uh, to ransom us off, or yeah. or they might have a have a have, have a mob level business discussion that they need to. Uh, <laughs> I mean, here in <laughs> yeah, in, in right? Eastern Europe, that's like. Uh, it's not even that uncommon here, you know. Like yeah, it's like it's like, like it's that. Just a same invitation to lunch, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. Like especially back in the old days here, lunch. this was like this was definitely called a business lunch. Like that's how you initiate <laughs> a business lunch with with someone. Um, but that was way back. We don't really have that 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 many arrangements like that anymore here. Um, so right. yeah. Um, did we put a cap in the in the coworker theories, or do you want uh, to add anything to that? Because I have, I have another theory that I find that I really believe strongly about. So um, can I take over? Yeah, let's or... do that one. Yeah, right. go for it. So there's this Reddit post, and I actually read into it, and I think it's a, it, they provided a really good theory. Now, before we get into that whole situation, I definitely want to bring out a few visual assets. So if anyone's listening to this, not on YouTube. Um, you could probably check the YouTube out a little bit later on and make uh, uh, make out what we are talking about. So the first visual asset will be this uh, picture that we've shown before. And then I will bring in a, a, a visual asset a little bit later on in the theory. So the theory goes a little bit like this. So uh, this Reddit post states that uh, the culmination of uh, this person's thoughts after exhaustively consuming every bit of information out there, including the podcasts, I'm convinced, uh, the person says, that the following is by far the most likely incident Jennifer found herself in. I bounced the possibility of different scenarios for months, but what finally sealed the deal for me was going back and playing with a POI photos in Photoshop. After playing with the image, image's luminosity, I was able to get a clearer picture of how the clothes fit on his body, um, so on the person who is seen on the CCTV, and come to the conclusion that he is undoubtedly wearing white overalls, specifically a painter's uniform. Now I know this isn't anything new, plenty of people have suspected this theory, but seeing this cements, cements it in my mind so the person is talking about this picture and i feel like they were actually the originators of the photoshop picture that we you know this picture is quite famous in this case now because a lot of people are looking at it on reddit okay so the the, the theory goes on so let's say he was a painter working on her appear, uh, apartment okay so by the way i want to bring in another picture real quick so this is another picture so painters overalls before we get into any further details do you see uh, a connection here oh yeah I definitely yeah, see a connection definitely. here even the shoes you know yeah even the shoes definitely everything and the, and the shirt right so let's say this person was a painter working on her apartment renovations if I had to guess I would suspect he wasn't he, one of the construction workers who worked outside and cat called her so maybe not one of the you know uh undocumented construction workers but rather he worked on a painting the 
painting the vacant rooms inside because there were also alongside of her condominium there were a lot of vacant ones as well where actually construction workers stayed during the construction work so that's a little bit odd there this allowed this person to have the keys to certain apartments perhaps even a master key let's say this guy had been working there for a while and and had seen jennifer coming and going he became obsessed obsessed with the young beautiful woman and fantasized about doing something unsavory to her but hadn't quite worked out the nerve to act on it then she goes on a vacation and he doesn't see her for a few days he worries that she might have moved out or hasn't actually been a resident there since now he sees other people staying in her apartment her brother and his friends which is so far this is perfect you know what i'm saying like uh her her brother did stay in the apartment while she was on vacation um so on monday the 23rd he comes into work and notices she is actually back realizing that this is his second chance he decides to act perhaps he goes and acquires whatever he thinks he'd need to abduct her knife rope tape etc he comes into work the next day like normal but this time waits for her to leave her apartment the apartment isn't very occupied with residents and if anyone comes out of the room the painters mulling around in the hall wouldn't raise any red flags when she opens her door keys purse phone with her he pulls a weapon or something maybe puts a knife to her throat and leads her to one of the vacant rooms he has access to perhaps he's set up a set up like a whole situation with like restraints in that unoccupied room he proceeds to rape and kill her in that room he then realizes that people will be looking for her and it appears that she never left the complex for work uh, that's how it would appear the first thing that they'll do is search the building so he gets her keys from her purse moves her car and walks back to the building now he's bought himself some time to deal with her remains he most likely has access to one of those vacant rooms for a while without other people coming to look for him assuming he's just painting he could have had hours to dispose of her body and phones and stuff maybe deep in the everglades and purge the room of any evidence the specifics and timing of this theory are less consequential to me maybe the painter was living in one of the vacant apartments and had a master key in which case he was able to abduct her the night before and do some some things let's less likely because then he'd have to stage her apartment but possible because the phones were switched off that night or maybe it was more of a crime of opportunity and he decided to force her into one of the rooms and on a whim essentially when he saw her leaving for work and no one else was around the point is the core of the theory still works i am convinced that if you find whoever was employed the paint the room inside do to paint the room inside you will find the man who killed jennifer cassie so what do you think guys did i miss anything please share your thoughts well i think the only thing this man missed is is actually another detail that that actually really correlates with this theory this is why i so strongly believe that this was the case the police department uh, the detectives brought out a dog a bloodhound named Bo, to like you know do like some dog sniffing around like you do in investigations right and he was first firstly brought to the car i believe and the and he traced the scent from the car back to jennifer's condominium so what if the man did park the car went back to the condominium disposed of her body in one of the vacant rooms and then just dodged you know maybe i mean that that would be a master plan no one would even suspect you did it you being a painter are you well equipped to wipe down a car for, from like any evidence um yeah you do tidy up stuff all the time so you know you have a yp something like that you wipe down the car and then you get go back to the apartment uh and 
you're you're essentially a mastermind killer and you get away with with killing jennifer cassie so i strongly believe that this theory is probably the in my eyes the strongest one because i mean the guy did look like a painter he did walk out of the car fairly casually but maybe that was his thing maybe he was not expecting cameras to be around maybe he was like if i just walk casually right now no one will think i'm suspicious you know so yeah that, which that's is true right right yeah nobody nobody did I, so I, I guess i have a couple questions right it's not it's not a bad theory i mean it's, it's certainly nothing seems ridiculous in terms of this case because um you know just i mean what we have to to look at and the fact of this person just disappearing and and uh, just the lack complete lack of clues otherwise so i guess my question is two things one is the the, the removing the batteries from the phone thing that they think happened does that seem like a sophisticated criminal or do you think that's something that even like a relatively un uneducated like laborer or something might do if like the phone started going off and going to voicemail do you think somebody would somebody know to do that knowing that that might potentially be traced later do you think that would be something just a normal back you know 15 years ago um, i don't know man i i personally probably would not think of this detail so i would be leaning towards that uh, a casual non-mastermind murderer would probably not not do that you know that's just how okay. i feel yeah i'm just trying to think because i was like at first i was like eh, I, don't, I don't know if like the painter would know to do that but then maybe if you're the painter and like you said it, it could have happened the night before and this these two two phones right was it was just yep. more than one phone whatever it was yeah uh, it was yeah the, the phone keeps going off and you're like well how do i make the phone not go off well you know take out the battery and and um back then yeah uh, it wasn't. It wasn't too hard to remove a battery from a phone. Not like now, right? With the right. smartphones. Yeah. Okay. So that's that's one thought. So that's just food for thought. The other thing is, I'm trying to understand how does the painter. And of course, like you said, we don't have any any evidence that the cops have like searched the other rooms in the in the place for any kind of signs of you know blood or distress. So there's a good possibility. You know, it's very possible. You know, like 10 years, 20 years from now something happens in one of these other rooms or they're, 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 or, or, or they're, they're doing a cleanup. Like, you know, like when, um, when uh, condos or apartments, when they change hands, it's not unusual to like re-carpet and repaint oh, yeah. everything. Oh yeah. That's, yeah. that's just normal, right? Right. So let's suppose, suppose like, you know, a few years from now, even now, right? It's been 14 years. Um, somebody, somebody like, the condo changes hands. They're, re they're, they're they're redoing the carpet, and they're like, "Oh my god, there's this big blood stain here in the bathroom or here on the, you know like someplace where they didn't expect mm -hmm. it yeah. that was under under carpet the whole time." I wonder, like, how did how would a painter or anybody if they did it? Because it makes sense. Like the rest of the theory makes yeah. sense. How do they get the body out of the apartment? Do they do they cut it up in pieces in the bathtub? Do they do they, like, like what's what's the way to, as a painter or a contractor to move either a body in whole like in a suitcase or something yes. like, like wh what's the equipment that a painter has other than like paint paint buckets i guess i mean if you're the, if if, you know if, I mean? he, if he was really planning it i feel like he bought knives yeah. you know? i feel like he came prepared so i think the tools uh you could definitely handle that situation uh with the tools but i feel like how you do that I, I definitely think you you essentially uh chop the the body up you know you know what i mean uh into like pieces yeah and then you put the body parts in in bags uh preferably uh black plastic bags to sort of look like yeah. trash but definitely not see-through bags so that you know you wouldn't see like people would not see that they are carrying out like a dissected head you know um uh, in a bag in a see-through bag so that that would not work but like a black concealed bag with like body parts you know and you just take them to the car and drive them away and once 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 your once the body is in the car all chopped up um i feel like that's pretty that that's just pretty easy i feel like i could do that could, you know dispose that that 
you know so i think i think that the hardest part is definitely chopping up the body in that vacant room you know that would be the hardest part to do because okay. because i don't know how how easy it is to like cut off someone's head or, or anything like that that's probably pretty pretty difficult to do you know what i'm saying i mean I, i've never tried it so i don't know but but yeah yeah i mean it's it's so funny i mean it's not funny it's like it's ironic that like whatever whatever we describe as as like you know kind of like tv episode ish like as fictional as it sounds enough degenerate horrible people have done things just like this and done this level of planning and you know what i mean like like this is i mean this is especially <laughs> like i think if it happened to me it would be it would be not so likely but like enough of this has happened to yeah people that look just like jennifer where you know, you know it, it's it's not it's not almost nothing is too far you know to say oh that, yes. that couldn't happen Correct. that's ridiculous that's that only happens in movies no unfortunately maybe especially because of movies because people are aware like it, 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 it kind of gets back to i know because we're getting kind of to the to the close of the show yeah or we're right around there i guess because I, 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 before we kind of give our vote on what we think is the most likely I, it makes me once again ask what's the chicken and the egg were people doing stuff like this i mean for sure people were always doing something like this horrible things to each other but it always makes me wonder how much the media and the movies and the dexter tv shows of the world and things like that how much of these things normalized this kind of like casual violence and and just disgusting like you know, like, like, like potentially if this is what happened to her, the, the thought that you could just do this to somebody and that it like almost normalizing it. I always wonder how much of it is the chicken, how much of it's the egg where did, are we kind of causing these things? Is that why we have more school shootings now? Is that why we have more, more of these things that happen because people, people get the idea in their head when they didn't before. So somebody like this painter, if that's what happened, where did this painter think that this was like an actual achievable? You know what I mean? It's like it's like you watch something, you watch somebody do a uh, do-it-yourself project on YouTube, and you're like, you know, I can do that too. Yeah, I can, I can build a wall. I can, I can, you know, car- carve a carve a head out of a out of a, a, a tree trunk. Did somebody watch? You know, did this person watch like like you know? CSI an episode Miami. Of a, yeah, or, or or Silence of the Lambs or something. Go, oh, you know, I can do that. That seems that looks kind of fun. You know, I can I can throw somebody down in a hole and, you know, make them my slave, like 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 that Castro, you know, that, that Ariel Castro guy chaining yep. up three ladies in his house, you know, what made him think that that was a normal thing to do, or something he could, you know, he seemed like he was kind of a big loser, but yet he seemed to pull that off. So anyway, yeah. What, so, <laughs> what are your thoughts on my my observation there? And then uh, I guess we'll we'll we'll. We'll do our, our wrap up on, on what we think happened. I mean, this is a continuation of this, I guess, discussion a little bit because we did also talk about this on our last episode, the Ariel Castro kidnappings. And once again, I think that you sort of have a point here that, you know, like what media portrays obviously makes, makes it seem pretty easy. Like if you were to watch any horror movie uh, where I guess the main villain just sort of snatches people up and then kills them and and disposes of their body um, before obviously getting found out then the the movie definitely makes it seem that even I could do it you know I mean how hard is it to like have a knife you know and just put put a knife in someone's neck I mean that's what i could do that as well you know but it's actually a lot harder than it actually is but yeah the movies definitely make it seem um that 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 could be even possible for any 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 average joe essentially um and then another thing is we should definitely like look into statistics of like crime and maybe we could find something out that way because right now i feel like we are just speculating but to that end i think you have an excellent point here but also i would like to say that you are starting to sound just like one of those grown-ups now you know where it's like <laughs> it's like 
don't do this kids don't watch this and that so yeah. you know so it's yeah, so, it's i mean sound like uh yeah. Trevor Gore or something in the right, 90s yeah. right no and it's I funny because I, I know it's it like yeah when i was growing up i used to get mad at the people that wanted censorship and you know like i i definitely consume all those all the same media you know i consume violent media on tv and games and i play them but yeah i can't help but notice i mean we've had a lot of disturbing stuff happen yeah. since i've been a grown-up maybe it's and, part uh, of growing yeah. up you know so i i, I definitely Indeed. look through my fingers at the situation a little bit like not really i'm thinking that it's a big deal but maybe you know when i get older hopefully if i get older and i don't run into painters you know you know what i mean <laughs> uh, then i might also f have the same sentiment that you have but now i think it's the time for us to give our final verdict uh what do we believe happened so i think i'm gonna start here i don't know what happened this case is a complete mystery but i definitely f right now feel that this painter theory is the one that i'm going with i feel like the painter did it i feel like he uh just as i described the theory he noticed that she was now gone he was upset but then he saw her again and he was like this is my chance and he did his thing essentially and unfortunately you know uh, no one found out what happened i mean the police office watched the investigation we have to definitely mention the, the orlando pd opd they're not like lapd they suck you know so that's that's <laughs> all i'm gonna gonna leave it at yeah i'm i'm leaning more that same direction too i mean this video if it wasn't for this video it would be probably easier to maybe point the finger at a co-worker or the or you know maybe an ex-boyfriend or something but um to me it really looks like it was somebody she didn't know that either either somebody working at that complex or some someone you know somehow abducted her and got her um, you know, obviously away from her, her own house and to a third location. And yeah, I mean, the fact that this car was, you know, it, it's so funny how like even this car dropping off video without that, it just opens up the possibilities a lot more because then, you're, you know, if the, if the car, like you said, if the car had been dumped in a swamp somewhere, I don't know, maybe it would have never gotten found. Right. What, but what, it, that, yeah. that would be like a complete vanishing, you know? Yeah, yeah. Or I mean, even if it had turned up, like uh, more a movie, like esque. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. You could you could have said, oh well, maybe the person themselves wandered off and then perished in the swamp somewhere. You know what I mean? Like there could have been, right. or or you would at least you wouldn't have had a camera view yeah. of who did it. Yeah. But we have somebody in big man shoes and what looks like big man pants, you know, and what looks like a man's haircut and and, and a hat. Right. coming out of her car and parking it in a way that's like considerate right except for the fact that it wasn't where it was supposed to be parked right so so yeah yeah, yeah so, so i'm leaning that way too um excellent so you know we have been going for an hour and 45 almost so i feel like this is a good cutoff cutoff point yeah. for the show today so um Yep, I think we pretty much gave our thoughts on this case. Um, there's definitely more investigative work to, to be done here. The police, I just want to once again uh, mention that the uh, not, not the police, but the family members of Jennifer Cassie, that they actually did a wonderful job trying to find her daughter. I really feel bad for them because they seemed like such a close-knit family. I hope they get these answers one day. And if they do, we'll definitely be here talking about those answers. Maybe even a follow-up episode with more details is in the works somewhere down the line who knows um so yeah guys thank you for listening to episode 44 of the solvable mysteries podcast once again if you are not aware we have a youtube channel as well where you can find these podcasts and we actually have a lot of visual cues on the youtube channel so you could get a better sense of what we are talking about when we are talking about certain pictures or, or footage that uh, obviously we're showing on the youtube but you cannot see them on spotify and things like that so um thank you once again for watching 
we'll catch you on the next episode anything any last uh, words on your end before we sign out man just thank you so much everybody for your comments we do read them uh and uh we do really appreciate them it really makes us feel great for what we're doing so um thank you again for listening and thank you for subscribing yep guys catch us on episode 45 next saturday and for now just stay safe and peace out Peace.